Hello again and welcome to Ndudu by Fafa. Thank you again for joining me for another experience with Fafa. As you can tell, we are going to be making some Fura Fula, which is gluten-free, made out of millet, and it's incredible. So for the list of ingredients, you would need your grains of saline. If you don't have that, you can use your black peppercorns, yes. Reason is, the grains of saleem has that black peppercorn taste, but of course, it's got a muskier flavor attached to that. Next thing is the guinea peppers. They are readily available online or at Amazon. Just try it, you might get some. And then we've got cloves, yes. And I love the flavor of cloves in this dish. I've got my ginger powder, but you can use your fresh ginger. And I've got my cayenne pepper as well. You can use your normal red chilies or your fresh chilies. I've got my aniseed and then of course the African nut mix. I've got that licorice sweet flavor also being incorporated into this dish. Obviously, in the UK, we're still in the lockdown. So I had to find a way that, you know, one can still enjoy this recipe or get as close as they can to the original recipe with limited ingredients. So these three ingredients are going to be incredible and they would help you. So number one, you will need your mixed spice, okay? The mixed spice should have as a list of the ingredients on the box, on the bottle, whichever way you buy it from, should have a clove and a nutmeg base as well as an allspice base yes allspice also known as pimento and with that it has that licorice flavor still it's got the black pepper corn that's included in there so if you have your cayenne pepper ginger and your mixed spice you're good to go so that will substitute all these other spices so yeah I love creating things and learning about flavors and, you know, getting as close as I can to the original recipe with limited ingredients. I love learning new things. Definitely. The day you stop learning is the day that you're dead, is what I say. I'm always up for learning something new. Absolutely. So here I've got my millet flour, which is readily available in most Asian grocers. And I've sprinkled it with a little bit of water. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is blend all my spices that I mentioned before. And I'm going to add that to this mixture. I've drizzled a little bit of water onto the flour. Hence, that's why it's got that wet, coarse nature. And I'm mixing everything together till it's well combined. You don't necessarily need to do this. You can mix everything together anyway. So I'm adding some cold water to my mixture. Now, do not worry about the list of ingredients and measurements. I'll be leaving that on my blog in dudubyfafa.blogspot.com. So do check it out. And I'll leave a link in the description box below. Now, I'm just going to mix everything together until it's well combined. Now, as I mentioned, I have done this recipe about two years ago. Yes. And I used a different method. And I will leave a link in the description box below. Yes, so you can watch that method. Compare that to this and then you make that decision as to whichever method you prefer. So I think I have got my desired consistency. Now what I'm going to do is strain this mixture. Yes. So I'm just using my sieve and as you can tell, I'm just straining this. Reason is because I need everything smooth and of course the spices that one has used, they're quite coarse and as much as I blended it, I knew there would be just too much in there so I had to take it out. But the beauty about this is once you've done this, I'm going to leave this mixture to ferment for three days. And what I then tend to do is I keep feeding it. Yes, it's my trick. So it means that I can always make fura on a whim because the most, you know, time consuming part is fermenting this. So once you have it, it's almost like a starter, then you're good to go.
as you can tell, I have strained this once and it's now ready for me to cover it with my cling film and allow it to ferment in a warm place for three days. Now, as to how I make my starter, I'll talk about that later. So on the third day, I've got my saucepan ready and here I've got my wooden spatula that I will be using in mixing this together. So I'm going to scoop some of my fermented millet into the saucepan and I'm just going to be cooking this on that medium to low heat because I need to regulate it. Now you notice when I was making the mixture I did not add salt because salt is a preservative and I don't want to preserve it, I want it to ferment. So whilst I'm cooking it, that's when I do add the salt, as you can tell. And now I'm just going to be mixing everything together on that gentle to lovely heat until I know that it thickens up and it starts to have that double cream consistency. And then it gets all exciting. Here I've got my millet flour and to that I'm going to add my mixed spice, yes, the one I mentioned earlier and also my ginger powder. Now I'm just going to mix everything together till it's well combined. Why have I done this? It's just to intensify that flavour as one does. But then again it's because I've ended up with a millet porridge which was a deliberate attempt, yes. And also because it's fermented, the fermentation is there, the spice is there, but not as much because of course I did strain it. So at this point I'm reintroducing the flavor again by, you know, infusing that into the flour. And I think I have got that desired consistency. And now I'm going to be scooping a little at a time of my flour and adding to this mixture. Don't be alarmed when you see it all like... It's almost like, oh, it's lumpy. No, 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 no. It's fine because so far as you follow this process, you are covered. So their trick is to add a ladle at a time and mix everything together until it's well combined. Now, this is where the wooden spatula with the two flat edges comes into being because you notice that when I do add the fly and I mix it together, I pull the entire mixture to the edge of the saucepan. That breaks any lumps. Look at that. Okay, I mean, look at one dollar. Eh, I glad that that of one on the club, I glad that they are expert. <laughs> what did I just say? I was just saying that, yes, as an hour lady, yes, when it comes to like the Banku sort of mixture thing, yes, we've got that one to the T because it's one of our tribal dishes, yes. <laughs> so, anyway, now that I've got that desired consistency, I'm going to allow this to steam for about 10 minutes just to make sure it cooks through perfectly yes absolutely but it's going to be on a very low heat the lowest heat possible because i just want that residual heat to cook this through now i thought this would just go in nicely Boom. <laughs> Of course, it had to go that way because this is the texture that you do require that is still firm but soft. Exactly. Look at that. Look at that steam coming through. And the smell is just incredible because you could smell every spice there is in there. And it's got that slight fermentation that is going through. I'm going to allow this to cool down to the point that I can touch and then mold it as one should. I hope I have given you that reason to click the subscribe button if you haven't done so yet and the notification button which means each time I upload a video you are notified of it. Please do share this video with your family and friends definitely and spread the word because we need this channel to grow because we've got so many ideas, I've got so many so many ideas and amazing stuff coming your way guys. Definitely I do need your support now more than ever please share leave a comment like the video if you do like it of course i'm not forcing you to like just like it for the sake of liking it no you should like it first and yes and if you've got any information any extra information that would help me definitely do share i love that i love learning new things now to a bowl add your plain millet flour because your mixture is now ready for you to roll it's important that you do wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water for at least 20 seconds before you handle this, most especially now than ever. So as you can tell, I've got a handful of my mixture in my palm. I'm manipulating it and rolling it into that perfect ball shape. 
I'm going to repeat this process until I've used up my entire dough. This is so easy. And it's quite therapeutic at this stage when you're rolling it. It's almost like an achievement. Mm -hmm. So let's keep rolling. At this point, my Fura Fula balls are ready. So I'm just sprinkling with a little bit of the flour and I'm just gonna to toss it to make sure that it's well covered. Now you can reserve this in the fridge. You can even freeze it as well if you wish. Thing is, when you leave it in the fridge, it still does ferment, but the process takes a lot longer because it's got that inclusion of the salt and also the cold temperature in the fridge. So I created this amazing snack and I only used three ingredients, actually four, yeah. You know, salt is an ingredient, obviously, yes. Four ingredients and it's an amazing snack with an everyday ingredient that everybody would have. It was supposed to be featured today, but I think I'll do that tomorrow. It's so good, but it's so naughty and nice though. <laughs> Yes, I had to explain that because I did put a post up yesterday stating that I've done something new and most definitely I did. But I would have that video ready by tomorrow. Just had a few technical glitches, but we'll sort it out. Nothing you should worry your beautiful head about. Mm -hmm. So now look at the pièce de résistance. So in terms of the starter, here I do have the millet with a little bit of water that has been fermenting. I'd say this has been going on for about seven days and I do put it in the fridge because I don't want it to over ferment and because I reuse it over and over again, it means I have to replenish it. So I'm just mixing everything together as you can tell now and I'm just gonna add a little bit more water and some of the millet flour. And it's the same thing that I'd say, if I wanna make hawuza koko, I can just grab just about the starter, mix with my normal fly, just go for it. It's you. It's just cutting your cooking time in half. Why not? So here we have it, and I'm just gonna mix it all together. You notice I've not added any more spice or anything like that to it. So any excess fly you have, do not discard it. Just make the starter and refrigerate it and keep feeding it. Absolutely, every three to four days, as one does. <laughs> anyway. To all my loyal subscribers, thank you very much. My notification gang, hey, you sit there, you sit there. Me da mwase wai, akpe na mi, mi nda ne shin. Eh, nye libi na afiyo, lo na, eh, eh. One plus one, two, eh, no, 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 no. Eh, blo me lo, akpe na mi lo, akpe, blo mi akpe supporta wa kata. Na wana yo emi. So I'll see you in my next video. Definitely. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification button now. Mm -hmm. So there is a concluding part of this video where I blended the Fula Fura, yes. And it does include a homemade yogurt, yes. I've done a normal yogurt recipe already, but this we're going to be using some lockdown ingredients. And they're just basic two ingredients that we're going to be using. So you have to stay tuned. If this is your first time, you're welcome. And if you have watched till this point, please don't forget to click the subscribe button and also the notification button select all so you do not miss any videos at all. I do not want to miss you. <laughs> so my next experience with you, please stay safe, take very good care of yourself. Me love you for you. Naturally, I'd leave all the list of ingredients and measurements on my blog, in indudubaifafat.blogspot.com, so do check it out. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter as indudubaifafat. Please pass by and say hi. Noelle, thank you very much for my theme song. And until next time, kings and queens, stay safe. Me love you for you.